Well, there's a few about this morning. One bubbling up on one of my spots, fishing real, real close. No hints. Haven't been doing a lot on the camera. I'm just trying to keep everything mega, mega quiet. Don't make any disturbance. Noise, here we go. <coughs> I'm fizzing up on the spot right now. Very, very close to the take. But the lake has really, really shut down over the last few weeks. Loads and loads and loads of big shows and displays. But less than one handful of bites in that time. But yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious they've, they've got close to spawning now. They're waiting for the right conditions. The weather keeps changing, it's very changeable. Um, and it seems, from what I've noticed, where they're showing over really deep water and what have you there they're obviously on various hatches and what not going off around the lake at this time of year but whether you find them on shallow spots put a little bit of bait out the the response has been pretty much nothing this is the first little opportunity i've had a hundred percent opportunity for a couple of weeks so I had a week off and during that week I think there was one bite and since then there's been I think two so scratching time you know that big feed up that big pre-spawn feed up that's been and gone <coughs> they're uh, they're obviously still eating but there's a lot of bait getting picked up by the birds. I'll show you those huge groups of tufties. You know, a bird that used to be a mainly migratory bird. They always sort of fly off for their breeding season years ago and they would come back at sort of some point in September. But nowadays they're just staying around all year. They've got brilliant food sources. There's climate change, all that sort of thing has affected the wildlife to a degree some point or another so um, <clears throat> they're a great indicator of what's being eaten and what's not obviously and when you're seeing bait getting picked up from all corners of the lake out in the middle zones that are getting fished at weekends areas that are getting fished and then people move off and you know you can look at that same area a day or two days later and the tufties are still picking bait up in there, which obviously means that it ain't getting eaten by the carp. Yeah, that uh, that energy source there obviously su supplementing that to some degree by the vast amount of natural life in the lake at the moment. Like a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure at some point on this this little vlog will be showing you big weather system that came in massive southwesterly huge amount of shows like I moved a couple of times to get on the fish and just zero response uh, a mate of mine he actually you know tried to tried to find what they were what depth they were feeding those fishing zigs no response um, that particular week there was a huge amount of dragonfly larvae hatching. Uh, like at one point I had five hatching out on the bivy in one at one point. They were crawling out of the lake uh, and the fish like you know, I said before, they'll tap into the most abundant food source at whatever time of year, whatever it is that's giving off the biggest signal, the biggest beat in the lake. That's what they'll harvest. It's a natural, it's a natural progression. You know, so um, you know when it's the caddis, it's the caddis. Potentially the the dragonfly larva, uh, the bloodworm, when they, whatever is the most abundant, the snails in the summer. That's what they know 
through evolution is the right thing to eat at that time. It's what's in its most, but it's like natural, it's like humans at harvest, you know, we're, at certain times of the year we're harvesting the most abundant crops. <coughs> and then you, you let them rejuvenate, that's what, I'm fizzing again now, I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, like back in the, you know, through evolution when we were hunter gatherers, it's exactly what we were doing. You would go round and <clears throat> take what was what nature had given you and use that. There's another one coming in out here. Um, yeah, what nature had given you in abundance at that time of year, and then you'd rotate that and move on to other things, and then let that rejuvenate. So the, the carp are exactly the same, they, they know what's going on, um, like masters of their environment, absolutely, 100%. Not much, as you can see, treated to an absolutely spectacular sunset tonight. Um, right, so where are we at? It, it was a late one getting down here this morning. Um, didn't get to leave home till half ten. Had to take the missus car to get serviced, which meant a bike ride home from the town for me and a late start on the fishing trip. But there you go, that's all done now. Got up here probably about midday. I think just a, just a little bit later. Um, had a good couple of laps around the lake. Stale old southwesterly been blowing. Uh, it's due to change tomorrow. Bit of a swinging wind direction. Should liven things up a little bit. But to say that, I've seen quite a few fish today, so managed to procure myself a decent position on the pit. It's probably one of the lesser fished swims, to be fair. Um, but what you've got to remember is throughout the spring these fish have been pretty heavily fished for and pressured and quite a few been caught um, so it's inevitable that they're going to start favouring the quieter areas of the lake the more inaccessible areas or places that people don't necessarily always want to fish so I've been eyeing this little spot up for a week or two um, noticed a big amount of fish showing out here on the last morning of my last trip so put a bit of bait round here, leaded it up, found a nice feature um, to fish to. Water on it today. Um, and really, like, you know, got the rods in with minimum fuss because of that little bit of prior preparation. Always goes a long way. You know, yeah, it would have been easy to have shot off home, had an early one home, but you know, that extra hour and a half, two hours spent just paid off today, definitely. Made it an easy task to get the rods in position. Minimum of fuss, got a bit of bait out there. Uh, there haven't been anything caught for over a week, as far as I'm aware anyway, unless someone's kept something quiet. So it's been been quiet, the fish are moody. They're obviously heavily on the naturals at the moment. Um, I've noticed a lot of boily being picked up by the birds, various areas on the lake. So uh, I'll talk you through tomorrow what I've been doing bait-wise this week. Uh, changed it up a little bit. Uh, we're still fishing boilie hook baits, little tiny wafters. Uh, gone, gone on to a load of uh, small bits and bobs, crumb and what whatnot. So yeah, it's that time of year. Anyway, I'm gonna get me uh, get my shelter up for the night, tucked away right behind the reeds here, and. Um, Hopefully, catch up with you in the morning with some news. All right, nice one. Big moon up there this morning. Now then, Jim, what are you doing? What on earth are you up to? What's this all about? Hey, what are you doing? 
Stupid, you clown. Right, here we are on the second evening of the trip. It's been a been an odd couple of days to be fair, like didn't get here till midday yesterday. As I said, but I, you know, I much prefer to be either here first light or turn up sort of on dark and have a good look round in the dark hours, but yeah, because of circumstances, turned up sort of midday, but we were treated to a beautiful sunset. I found quite a few fish during the day. Got in a good swim that I've been wanting to start actually fishing for a couple of weeks now. Just giving it a couple of little hits of bait, nothing major. Because um, as I said to you last night, there's only been one bite that I know of in the last sort of, almost couple of weeks now. So they're not really having it. Um, there's a number of reasons we can speculate as to why. I'd say the first one and the most obvious is that they haven't spawned yet. It's now the 18th of June. Um, most lakes around the country have, have done it. They've got it out of the way. Um, sometime, you know, some lakes twice. Uh, this one, they, they haven't got it on. So, you know, the fish are big, they're probably a bit uncomfortable now. And I'd imagine they're just waiting for those perfect conditions to, to get that act out of the way. And it, it's probably the reason why we're struggling to get them to want to eat our bait. Definitely eating naturals, you know, seeing signs of feeding activity in the mornings, albeit nowhere near like it was a few weeks ago when they were ripping the weed up and actively getting on spots. You know, if you were on fish, chances were that if you were discreet enough about it and didn't disturb them too much, then you would get a bite. Um, that isn't the case at the moment. It's totally changed, totally different. Um, so today we've had really, really heavy, persistent rain this afternoon. Um, had a good look around this morning. Um, had a few fish in the area uh, at first light. It took them a while to get going. Um, I was up, as I say, I got up about half three. Um, didn't see the first fish till five although there were the odd sign, but the first proper show was at five, and then I've seen maybe a dozen in the area, nothing absolutely bang on the money until this afternoon. So right in the middle of the persistent rain, everything had flattened off. There was just a peppering of raindrops on the surface, uh, and I'm tucked behind a really big reed bed here. So my vision is pretty much limited uh, for a lot of the time and let's stand out in the water. And um, I heard a fish crash out. So uh, I've gone out there and he's maybe 15 yards off of my spot. And 10 minutes later, he's right over the top of it. Uh, and I've had a liner on that rod as well this evening. So signs are looking good. It'd be nice to get a bite tomorrow morning. Um, I've gone very cautious with the bait. Um, on two rods. On one rod I've given them a load and some quite visual stuff and what have you. Um, put a load of corn and salty maize in uh, just to, you know, ask a question really, you know. Um, is it going to take that to, to capture their attention? You know, is it that they're, they're very focused on the natural food in the lake at the moment? Well, you know, that remains to be seen, but you've got to You've got to ask questions to get answers and um, you know it's worth experimenting with at least one rod you know um, i've put zigs out fish pop up straight up off the lead uh, over the weed so yeah asking a few questions i've been chodding but mainly i've still retained my focus on my little baited areas in the hard spots that's what i like at this time of year um, so yeah, just 
few things I've been doing lately. Pretty much my tactics have been pretty straightforward. Um, coming out of late winter, early spring, most of my fishing is, is single pop-up fishing, casting and showing fish, moving on to areas where I'm seeing them, and that style of angling. That changes as the water temperature warms up and I start applying bait to the lake. Once I get the few spots going and I know the fish are actually actively seeking out the bait, um, I start to fish you know, spots and um, baited areas. Right, it's absolutely teeming down with rain now, so I'm just gonna sign off quickly and get the camera in the dry. Right, it's absolutely teeming down with rain. Um, so I've moved the camera into the dry under the bivy and we'll crack on. Right, so what I was gonna just run you through was the tactics that I've been using over the last sort of month or two on the water. Um, <clears throat> so once I start applying the bait uh, and I'm fishing spots over pre-baited areas or areas that I know have been cleaned off by the fish, ever, I, I wanna fish something that is pretty much exactly the same as what I'm feeding at this time of year you know once that spring early spring periods out of the way fishing the bright ones and all that um, you know once those fish have been caught once or twice or whatever um, I just want to I want to get down to a different mode of angling and that that is sort of a match the hatch if, for want of a better phrase um, so basically rigs are very very simple for this style of fishing over baited areas um, this, is a, this is a new material that I've been sort of playing about with for the last year or so um, it's going to be called Think Link I believe so I used to use this rig predominantly with amnesia sunset amnesia material which had really sort of unusual properties it was like a memory free mono so it was it was supple yet it had a, a modicum of stiffness about it. <clears throat> it's very quite a unique product really. Um, we've got our own our own style of mono now that is very similar um, in the respect of it's got a lot of free movement as you can see. Um, yet yeah, it retains that element of stiffness that you want, you know, um, when you're fishing this style of rig that aids your anti-ejection properties and anti-tangle properties. I mean, I use this for the bulk of my fishing. You can present a bait exactly where you're feeding your bait, which is on the, on the bottom. 99% tangle free with a really efficient hooking system. That's, so it's a short section. <clears throat> Just tie a three turn blood knot there to the uh, to the swivel. Little thinking anglers tungsten dropper there. Just sort of halfway down the link. I fish this link generally if I'm if I'm sort of catapult or spawning the bait out, so tight, tight clusters of bait. I fish it about five inches. If I'm fishing the spread of boilies out of the throwing stick, I'll go up to about seven inches with it, something like that. Just gives it that little bit more movement. Um, nice big D. There. And that's fished with an outturned eye hook. So like a chob style hook. That takes out the the element of stiffness of the material just allows the hook link to exit the, the eye at a really nice angle and then that's finished off with a, a little micro hook ring swivel and then all I do basically I get these little um, sticky grill dumbbell wafters length of floss a 
thread the dumbbell on lengthways. So needle through the dumbbell like that. Thread the floss through the eye of the hook ring swivel. Dumbbell is then mounted like that down onto the barrel section of the hook ring swivel, leaving the eye exposed so you get that beautiful rotation like that. Yeah, so a nice 360 degree rotation of the hook. <clears throat> so when that when that hook link's picked up, so it sits like this on the bottom, hook lays flat, and the little dumbbell wafter just hovers above, beautifully able to move around on that D. When the, when the rig's picked up, the hook just spins and drops underneath the, the hook bait, and with that big D, you can see there's a lot of separation there between that hook bait and the point of the hook, which has allowed plenty of movement now to catch hold somewhere in the mouth, normally nice and central in the bottom lip. But that's how it works. And then all I do, is just trim the floss off and blob it up with a lighter, like that. Just, that secures it onto the rig, as you can see there. Look at this girl. I think she might well be pregnant. <laughs> little, little mate. Right. Super cool. Well, well, well. So, we've had a move. Moved right around the other side of the lake. Uh, watched them show this morning. Few fish near to my area, but it weren't really going off. And I watched them ripping up an area out in the middle of the pond. Um, couldn't wait any longer. Wrapped up the gear, got round there. Uh, fished the swim once before. Bit of a sore subject, really. Um, losing a losing the bigger on the on the first night or first morning, unfortunately, um, due to an unseen underwater snag, um, an old rope. But there you go. But um, anyway, back in that swim, haven't fished it since then. Um, didn't really want to. <laughs> but um, we're in here now, and um, I've whacked the rods out to the zone got the throwing stick out, put a kilo of boilies all over the area, just dotted them about and uh, got the kettle on and it was that quick. Rods ripped off, really good battle out in the pond. 10, 15 minutes maybe, real angry fish, lovely old common real warrior. Anyway. You can see it's still raining so I'm just gonna give it Five minutes, obviously, uh, before I get them out, or her out. Um, we'll do do a few shots, a bit of footage, and I'll let you have a look at her. She's a real cool one, no doubt about that. Well, he didn't want to get up. Can't be bothered. Do you reckon, Jim? I mean, even eating his dinner. Oh, you're getting up. I'm going to come and have a look at this fish here. Huh? And a mouse hunt, more likely. There he is. That's about that. There he's a savage. Look at how long he is. Huge 
X. Dark. Melted tile. Jet Rocket. Absolutely mega. Loving him. Beautiful fish. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's taken a, a fair bit of work to get that bite. So I'm really pleased with this fella. Really pleased. It's, uh, just the sort of reason that I come to these sort of waters. Absolutely magic. Look at it. Unreal. Covered in the ravages of time. There you go. Anyway. That's a super cool one. Go <coughs> back to back home. There you go. Oh, loving you, mate. move yesterday in the rain get around to this zone had that first take really quick yesterday got the rod sorted for the night and uh, scattered a bit more bait around with the stick last night getting a few liners through the night and um, yeah first light this morning we've had a double take unfortunately as is the case in these sort of situations I've landed one of them and the other one the, the take stopped, the fish ended up in the weed, and uh, he come off. But this is a lovely one anyway, I'm going to show you this one. So, uh, Notice a lot of these ones in here, they've got this uh, incredible, these incredible little patinations on there. You can probably see that hopefully. All so unique, incredibly unique. Okay, let's get back. Let me show you the other side. And lovely little scallop fins. Absolutely beautiful. All weathered by time. There we go. Perfect mouth on a big overslung mouth. One of the 
more gold on ones, this one. Very welcome, after a tough couple of weeks. So, I'm gonna get her back. Her back. We're after her big sister. Off she goes. Beautiful morning. And a carp. Can't do no better than that. 